interesting guy, man. And, uh, you know, he believes it. So, Kyrie, the earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So, whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> this is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, that's because you're still trying to get tickets for the 2017 International Conference. And as of right now, at least the first round is sold out. Unknown whether there's going to be additional tickets, but if you are a member of the press, I'm sure you might be able to get a press pass. Either way, just keep hammering on fe 2017.com and keep badger, badgering the promoters and see what you can find out. And if I, as I get more information, I'll let you know as well. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. If you are not listening to it at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern, and it is not Tuesday night. That means it is not live. So if I give you a phone number and you call, you're going to go to voicemail. Now, I may pick it up, but you're not going to be able to talk to me live. And since we're going to do a time date stamp, just so people don't confuse and then call in, today is uh, June 6th, 2017. So if it's not June 6th, it's not live. Just letting you know. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery, it is the facts that matter, not the proofs. Physics can progress without the proofs, but we can't go on without the facts. If the facts are right, then the proofs are a matter of playing around with the algebra correctly. And that was from Richard Feynman, American theoretical physicist. Pay no attention to that siren behind me. I'm just going to call that production value right there because it's a conspiracy show. So if you hear a siren, you know, that's not a special effect. Uh, a couple quick announcements before we get turn on the phone lines, and if they work, they work, and if they don't, then we're going to go to emails, because Lord knows i got plenty of those. The Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge is still in effect, and Peanut Gallery says they're coming to take me away. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. I know that song very well. And other people are listening, which is good. Certain possible agents slash uh, aliens. Or maybe listening. Okay, uh, Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge is still in effect. The anyone from the academic world who wants to debate a flat earther think they can bring him down? By all means, contact me. I will set you up with Jeffrey Grupp. Although Jeffrey Grupp's just gathering dust at this point because it's been so long. I, I didn't really know what month I started that because it's been so long and nobody has stepped up. Nobody from the academic community. We're having such a hard time getting a, a solid uh, debater on the other side. The Flat Earth Rally on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls is going to be on Canada Day from noon to four. You can email n as in Nancy F F E at gmail.com or Flat Earth Hamilton at gmail.com. If you're near Niagara Falls or if you're on the 
eastern side of Canada. You want to do something over there. There is going to be a debate, and I just found out about this a few minutes before the show. There's going to be a debate between Zen Garcia and Dr. Stephen Pigeon. Spelled a little differently, P-I-D-G-E-O-N. It's going to be August 5th and 6th in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you don't want to go to the Flat Earth Conference, it's going to you know happen in November, you can check out the, maybe, maybe head on down to the, it's for the Christian community. I can guarantee you that right now because it's Zen Garcia. You can head on down and check out the debate in Atlanta, Georgia, August 5th and 6th. Big money challenge also still in effect, and I'm going to lump that up with the Atlanta thing. If you guys want to know more about the inform, uh, more information on the Atlanta Georgia debate between Zen Garcia and Stephen Pigeon, or you want to know more about the big money challenge, you can contact the same person, and that's Kathy Dunson, D U N S O N, and her email address is perilandra77 at gmail.com. That is P E R E L A N D R A 77 at gmail.com and a couple more things before we open up the phone lines as you know I do in fact my first email which I may read unless somebody calls you know what I'm going to give out the phone number now let's see if this sucker works 720-897-6111 that is 720 I'm going to say it slow 897-6111 if you call now, you'll get to talk to me. And you don't have to go through a producer or anything on the way in. It's just me. So be nice because no, no matter where you go, there you are. And the first email, if somebody nobody calls in real shortly, I'm going to talk about, oh, there's a phone call. Oh, and it's not working. You know what? It's not working. I can't pick you up. But that's okay. Guys are going to have to keep trying. We may have to. Remember what happened before where I had to sacrifice callers to the volcano god of calls that's what we're going to do here we're going to hang up on that guy and just keep trying to call eventually that group call thing is going to going to work for somebody i don't know how it just magically appeared last time it's like i had to nope 714 is not gonna because i can't take it it won't let me add to group which sucks Eh, that's all right anyway um let's just go to emails for the time being, until I can figure out what's going on with the phone, then 215. Oh, man, I feel bad, because everyone's calling in now, and I can't take the call, because as soon as I do, it's going to... I can't take. I can't do the station and the call at the same time right at the moment. I will fix it after the break, but keep keep hammering away, if you can. And let's see, peanut gallery, yep, 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 peanut gallery's upset because the, the phone calls aren't working, which is fine. It could happen. Not my fault. 200 lashes to myself. Seriously? I'm not that kind of guy. That's a religious thing, anyway. I'm not going to go along with that. And somebody else says that the, oh, oh, here's another quick announcement, which is Patricia Steer, Nathan Oakley, and Martin Liebke and others invite you to the Learning Learnington Spa in England, UK meetup. So if you're listening to this and you're in the UK, there's going to be a meetup Saturday, July 22nd with a picnic. More details coming, I'm sure, from one of those people, either Patricia Steer, Nathan Oakley, or Martin Liebke. That's awesome. That's great. And thanks for the to the people that are calling in already. I'm again. I'm going to figure this out. I'll I'll redo. I'll shut everything down. Well, I'm not going to shut down the whole system, but I'll shut part of it down during the um, during the first break. So sorry, seven one four. You're going to have to hang tough. All right, we're just going to go straight to emails. Ready? Here we go. First email. I know peanut gallery. You're just going to have to live with it for now. It's called survival guide. That's the name of the email. Literally, there's only one word. In the email, it says, please. And that's from Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. And yeah, for anybody that wants a free survival guide, I've got one PDF format. It's only like two megs. And it's about 100 pages long, and it's great. It, it'll help you out. And but the chances are you got to print it out before the power goes out. Because how dumb will you feel if you get the survival guide and then you have no power and then you're like just, you're like running on battery on your phone going oh, oh what, trying to memorize stuff yeah it's not gonna not gonna help you very much i'm sorry this one's called flat earth messages on cash hi mark here's some pics that you could add to your slideshows if you want as a request can you please hold the slides with writing longer please please it's so hard to read them annoying to keep stopping the video on my phone you can keep the easy ones like the license plates short Okay, here and Subpoena Gallery actually sent me a quote about that. Cheers, Mac. And what he did was, let me, I think it's Canadian money. 
Yeah, he he took a whole bunch of comedian money. And I know cash isn't as fashionable as it used to be, but by all means, if you're using quite a bit of cash, write stuff. He's got like NASA lies and flat earth truth and earth is flat. Awesome. If you want to put my name on it, fine. Hopefully the government won't come come at me. 817 is calling in. I'm sorry about 817. I'm going to have to hang up on you. And maybe I'll just let some of these calls go through and see if we can figure out. You know, during the break, I may have um, Peanut Gallery also buzz me and see what I can do there. So, yeah, money, cash, money, writing flattered stuff on cash. Awesome. This one's called Hi Mark, third time emailer here. Hi Mark, hope your day is going great. Just wanted to point you to another display of globe programming in the pop culture this evening for your viewing pleasure. Below is a trailer available on YouTube for the movie Triple X. The Return of Xander Cage. In case you're unfamiliar with this movie franchise, Vince Diesel stars in it, and he's a globetrotting super spy type of figure in this movie. Now, I know that might sound interesting, but the production quality is not that good, to say the least. This is the third installment in the franchise, by the way. Anyways, I timestamp the, th- the theme where the satellite shows up briefly during the trailer. The premise of the movie is the bad guys have a device that can potentially control all the satellites in the Earth's orbit. And Vin Diesel, otherwise known as Triple X, has to go and save the day. Now to the fun part. The movie starts with a bang, an intentional crash of a satellite that supposedly kills Samuel L. Jackson. This is something that you and many of us flat earthers have been hammering uh, the NASA or any of the space agencies about uh, of... How come we never see a satellite crashing into random locations around the Earth? Perhaps they listen to us and are showing the symptoms of the infamous angry wife syndrome. Who knows? There's been a ton of globe programming in the recent movies that came out this year. Just thought I'd let you know of this particular instance of programming because, let's face it, not that many people have seen the latest Triple X movie. Ha ha. Have a good one and keep up the great work. And that's from Jay. Thanks, Jay. And yeah, I actually downloaded that one. Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to say that. Okay, I watched Vin Diesel's latest Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. And you're absolutely right. When I was watching it, that's the first thing I thought was, ugh. The whole premise is, yeah, you can crash satellites. Use them like weapons and literally crash satellites with pinpoint accuracy accuracy into a building. That is ridiculous. Absolutely horrible. Uh, let me go through. I'm just trying to see how many calls I've missed. I've missed eight calls already. That's not good. Peanut Gallery says, "If this is a quote, if email had been around before the telephone was invented, people would have said, hey, forget email. With this new telephone invention, I can actually talk to people. That's funny. It's true. It's one of the reasons why I have never. Now, I, I actually enjoy. I get. I understand emails. Because they replace snail mail. The fact that regular mail is now called snail mail. I actually understand that part. But when text, texting came out, that's when everything went downhill. And that actually followed the, the Sun Tzu Art of War. which One of the quotes that people memorize, well, they should memorize. For, if you're going to memorize anything from Sun Tzu Art of War, it's this. People are like water. They always take the path of least resistance. And texting is socially less awkward than phone calls and because of that people text a lot and but unfortunately you lose so much in translation look being on the phone rather than face to face you lose facial expressions but being on text rather than being on the phone you lose just about everything you lose voice inflection tone pace uh just about everything you can pick up from somebody's voice you, it's gone. It's, it's in, entirely gone. I mean, the, you have no idea, which is why we had to create emoticons to tie with the text. The, in fact, emoticons are almost essential now because you don't know the, in what context the, it's being sent to you. So anyway, it's annoying at the very least. Oh yeah. Yeah. And let me, let me bring up that thing from just a few minutes ago. And I know another 10, 11 minutes till the break, you guys can survive. And then I'll, I'll try to get the phones back up and running. I will try the, what was I going to mention? Oh, yeah, the, the guy that emailed about it making the slides longer. Now, see, what happened was, since I was using DITRH's slides, he sent me a bunch of them with a whole bunch of text on them. Since I've been using those, they, I've, I've had to slow down the text. People have said, oh, so I slowed it down initially from six seconds long to nine seconds per slide. And the guy that wrote me just then, that was before I made the change. So the question to you guys out there is, is nine seconds enough? 
for the slides. And no, I'm not going to go through individually and make some four and some five and some nine. It's a global setting. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to start parsing that out because I get a ton of slides every week from people and I keep cramming more and more in there. And it's, it'd just be a pain to just try to decide you know, what gets less time and what isn't. So right now I've got them at nine seconds a piece. Seems pretty reasonable. DITRH thinks that it should be longer, but if you have to pause it to read it, that's fine too. Plus, you got to remember, it'll, chances are it's going to loop back around eventually. Well, now just even going through the slides once at nine seconds, I think it takes almost the better part of an hour. That's a lot. So let me know what you think, what I should do there, if, if I should do, make them longer or not. I personally think I'm just going to keep it at nine seconds, but you never know. All right, this one's called No Subject. Uh, because it's not from here. It's from Dubai. Hi, Mark. Hope you are well. So much stuff is coming out now. And there was an article on popsci.com, 10 ways you can prove Earth is round. And that's from Reese. They spell it differently over there, R-H-Y-S, Hamer. He was the guy that, that tipped off that Dubai radio station, by the way. He's actually a listener. He was working out with the guy from that radio station out in Dubai. So thanks, Reese. Hope you're, hopefully you're listening. It's great. Probably not if he's in Dubai at the moment. You may have to listen to it tomorrow. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Good day to you, sir. I've recently found your work through your appearances on several different podcasts. I have always been a conspiracy guy, even being as young as I am, 27, spent some time in the military and have always had a thirst for knowledge and trying to wrap my head around what has actually happened in the time before me and what is currently going on. A couple of questions for you. One, what are your thoughts on the Bermuda Triangle? Is it possible to believe that they may actually have a device present in the water or a structure set up to aid in the cover of of plane flight pattern, wow, patterns, patterns or ship routes? Possibly some type of EMP or anti-radar which would explain all these disappearances of lost aircraft and ships. Okay, let me answer that one first. Bermuda Triangle, I don't think has anything to do with us. I think that is old, old technology tied into Atlantis, tied into Bimini Road. Really, seriously, look up Bimini Road. It's right off of Florida. It's a real thing. And scientists say, no, no, it's just normal rock formations. It's like, there's a reason why they call it Bimini Road. Do you know other roads that are lying in shallow water around the world? I don't think so. So I think it's part of an older civilization, maybe part of a power plant that was uh, left over, you know, part of some interdimensional thing. Who knows? Whatever, it, but, but it's malfunctioning. It's still down there. The question is, was it left deliberately kind of to create a mystery or is there something else going on there and they're actually grabbing the occasional ship? Don't forget was the, oh, was it Flight 19 in Alpha, Florida? which were the, I think it was the four, the squadron, the, the squadron of four planes. They were doing a, a bomber run, a practice bomber run on an old Navy Hulk boat that was out there. And they lost their way, completely lost their bearings, never came back to base, never said they were crashing. But that wasn't the interesting part. The interesting what part was they sent out a search plane, I think it was an Osprey, with a crew of 11. This is a float plane. This is a plane that's designed to land on water so you can pull guys out of the water. So it's not like they're going to crash into the water like these other other uh, things. It's, it's basically a giant seaplane. And that thing, with its entire crew, then disappeared. And then they launched this massive search and rescue operation and never found anybody. That's the creepy stuff. So yeah, don't for flight 19, that's one thing. But the Osprey that followed it, that's a whole nother whole nother animal. I mean, you got a full crew plane that can land in the water, crew that can land, you know, a full rescue crew that's perfectly suited for, you know, for ditching in case uh, creepy stuff. All right, number 2, with the dome idea in place, would the conspiracy of chemtrails be there to help in masking said dome or are they used in controlling weather outside of the dome or inside of the dome? Could be both. Could be either. Could be neither. I don't know. To, to, there's something going on with chemtrails. Do I think chemtrails are real? Yes, I do. Does anybody have a concrete idea of exactly what they are doing? No, they don't. It could be multiple levels happening here. Could could be a way of masking part of the dome. You know, maybe there's some display issues, and they're trying to keep. You know, but could it be a genetic marker? Could it be, uh, I mean, people, we know this, people aren't dropping it like flies in the fields for after a plane goes over. So it's not a, if it is a poison, it's a very weak one. I mean, could it be tired of more gallons? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I, all I can say is chemtrails are real. We probably won't know the, the exact reasoning until the end, until the conclusion of 
the civilization. Number three, is there a correl correlation between your theories and clues and these random disappearances of all the recent aircraft? A direct, th a direct correlation between my clues and the random disappearances of all the recent aircraft. Oh, like the Malaysian flights. No, I don't. No, no, I don't think it's a direct correlation. But it is interesting that flight once a plane gets over water, and it doesn't even have to be the southern hemisphere. I mean, there's there's less chance of it in the northern hemisphere. But once you get over water, where there's no land between you and the next hop, then you the the latitude and longitude coordinates drop into approximated or estimated mode, and that's very very unusual, especially since you should have blanket multiple overlapping blanket coverage from the global positioning system, which was built by the DOD, otherwise known as the United States Department of Defense. So if they got blanket coverage, how do you lose triple sevens? Triple seven is a flagship, by the way. That's state of the art commercial airliner. How do you lose that in the Indian Ocean? It's not like they were in the South Pacific. They're in the Indian Ocean. How do you lose them? And that's because there's nothing to track them, as far as we can tell. Unless unless they were being tracked by something else and they were dropping them on purpose. Don't know. Anyway, uh, he ends this email with, I appreciate your time and I want your response. I enjoy talking with other people to not only gain more information in a specific area, but to gain another perspective. Isn't that what it's all about? Gaining perspective. And while I was reading that, Peanut Gallery says, ah, not Osprey. It was a Martin PBM Mariner flying boat. You know, I should have known that being up in Seattle and the local baseball team is called the Mariners. I should have known this. All right. So sorry, but it, but it was flight 19, right? Peanut gallery, Martin PBM Mariner was tied to flight 19, a squadron of four Navy bombers, personal bombers. I think, I think they had two pilots each. Somebody looked that up. If you get a chance. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Good. And you want and the, the, it's also tied to the, um, beginning of, 254 area code. Sorry, we're going to have to wait till after the break. The it's also tight. That's the the beginning scene of Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which I love so much. This next one is called Hiding God. Mark, you are obviously much brainier than me. But I don't know about that. I listened to your video and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. it. Makes a whole lot of sense, but I have a question or two. You are saying that it is God who has us in sort of a barrier, right? Not man. Yes, I am. We did not build this. Is the sun real? Uh, define real. I think it's a real thing, but it's very small. It's less than 50 miles wide. Because I know NASA lied about what it is made of. Oh, of course. I've always believed in God, but I gave up on a religion a long time ago. After all, look how long kings murdered anyone who didn't believe they were told what they were told. Good point. I want this to be the end times. Ooh, I don't know. That's kind of dark. After learning about the Quran, I knew that either this hunchbacked Muhammad totally made it up to suit himself. Even his child's wife said so to him, or it's actually a Satan based cult. I cannot bring myself to call it a religion or God is evil. I sure hope not. Wow. That would be a terrible irony. You are right about the flights and GPS. So how much of what I see when I look up at his illusion, pretty much all of it. Deep questions. I don't actually expect answers. Good video. I thoroughly enjoyed it. By the way, in case you choose to answer, I will Ask, what is your age group? I am 49. Just hoping you are not a man with no life experience. No, no, no I'm, I'm not 22. You don't sound like one. And to be fair, I'm 54 and feel 74. <laughs> I don't hear that very often. I'm 54. I got one foot in the grave. Awesome. I am thinking that we, American and Russian governments, used the nukes in an attempt to break out. Good point. Is that what you think also? Yes, I do. Also, I'll let you go. This is probably the longest email you have received. Hardly by a long shot. Sincerely, Trish McLemore. Oh, it's also the first email I have written. <laughs> written ever? Or written to someone like me? That's awesome. Good stuff. Oh, and she, she has a follow-up email. And it says, I noticed it has my YouTube name. I am Trish. Oh, I don't. I should probably shouldn't read her uh, Oh, there's a picture of her. You know what? I better respond to her. So let me put that in my thing. She actually bothered in her first email to attach a picture. And I, she probably doesn't even know the show exists. Or maybe she does. Uh, do we have time for one more before the break? Yes, we do. And before I pick that up, let's see what the peanut gallery's got going on. Yes. Yes, they were Grumman Avengers. Yes, five of them. Oh, man, I thought there were four. 
Uh, Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America, Hawkeye, and Black Widow. Oh, Avengers. Thor was away. Funny. It's good. Yeah, but... Oh, because all five of them were in the planes. Yeah, but Iron Man can fly. And Hulk can actually jump real far. Plus, I don't think you can drown the Hulk. So, thank you, Peanut Gallery, for that. That's awesome. Okay, this one's called Radio 4000 Miles. Hi, Mark. I'm watching a documentary on a flight of a Vulcan long-range bomber doing a run on the Falkland Islands, 1982 War, England versus Argentina. And you can check that out on YouTube. I'm going to click that real fast. And it says, First Strike of the Falklands War. Full documentary, HD. It's put out in 2014. It's got 731,000 hits. Awesome. It's great. Anyway, he says, uh, 41 minutes, 22 seconds. The code word was also picked up on the Ascension Islands 4,000 miles away. Ah, he goes, yeah, radio works well over 4,000 miles, right? Where's the curvature? Rick. Thanks, Rick. Awesome. Even though I know I said your name, Rick, even though you try to disguise it and call yourself Flatty. That's good. Uh, do we have time? Do we have time? Yeah, let's try it. Let's see if we can squeeze this one real quick. It's called Flat. Mark, just watch one of your videos, and I like how you make solid arguments without some of the ignorance surrounding flat earthers. I have had my fill of ball spinning at 1,000 miles an hour with throw everything off or people upside down on the bottom of the globe. Lame and unscientific arguments that play into the hands of people making fun of F.E. I am a 70% flat earther, but have not yet seen adequate evidence to make me 100%. I absolutely believe we are being lied to regarding a huge number of issues, but most could be deceptions for a purpose outside of flat earth. I have seen Admiral Byrd's interview numerous times. Love it, but again, it does not necessarily debunk globe earth. It is possible for a government power group to unite countries in keeping things secret for their own purposes, even if the globe earth was true. Look up the corrupt banking system. Blah, blah, blah. Globe or flat does not matter to their agenda, though there are more far-reaching reasons as to why they would lie, want to lie to us. Can you recommend any particular sources of what you consider to be good information? Best regards, Kim Michael. And yeah, I sent a list. Flat or short list for new people on my channel. So anyway, we'll be back in a bit. Hopefully I'll get this phone thing working. No hype, no fear. You're listening to Truth Frequency Radio. We are TFR. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. And I am sorry, guys, but for at the for the moment, you're just going to have to keep calling and get nothing because I cannot add you to the group. Don't know why. Don't know why. Every once in a while, Pina Gallery will call it the ghost of Richard Hatch, which you guys will have to look that up to figure out what's going on there. So let's go into emails. Until then... I, I do not know why. I mean, I'll I'll reset it again after the second break. Just, to, I mean, last week, literally, we didn't have a single problem. Not one. And this time, I cannot add to group. I rebooted the machine. Everything's fine. You know what? I don't. Fire and fall back. Who knows? Everything for a reason. I do believe in fate. I don't know why. Remember that show, that, what, 45 minutes before? Before I was supposed to go on air, windstorm came through Seattle and knocked power out. Was not it wasn't even close. Knocked it out for eight hours, and couldn't do the show. Whoever, maybe that started a chain of events that will bring apart, um, bring about the uh, the new golden age. I don't know. Anyway, let's go straight back to emails for now. Because by the way, you guys could also email in your questions if you want. I might get to them if they're at the top. Uh, the, the email address is msargent23 at comcast.net. That is msargent23 at comcast.net. This email is called Story Hitting Mainstream UK News. Hi, Mark. First time reaching out, but I've been a lifelong follower and flat earther since June of 2016. 
as I like to find tidbits in mainstream media, I thought you might find this interesting. And it's at metroco.uk. It's called Flat Earther Used a Spirit Level to Prove that the Earth is Flat. And you guys are into Flat Earth. You know who that is. That's D. Marble. D. Space Marble. And Patricia Steer interviewed him just recently. In fact, real recently. It was last week or something like that. And he, uh, he, he was a gentleman from south of Seattle in Tacoma, Washington, who got on a plane and recorded the whole thing. Him carrying a Spirit Level and doing the whole Flat Earth thing. And it caught some mainstream attention. It was one of those interesting pieces and yeah it got a huge amount of thumbs down because remember 90 percent of the population still doesn't buy it but it was interesting that that they would get that sort of mainstream attention loved it and he also says uh, one thing that struck me was the poll embedded in the article oh yeah yeah you guys should check that out at the time of the writing it was nearly 25 percent of the people saying they already knew the earth was flat or this article helped them believe it now, I realize people often vote in a satirical manner, but I still believe the truth is sinking into more and more people. Keep up the good work, mate Andy from Prague. And yeah, if you guys want to go, get fa- have some fun. Go to this article if you get a chance. Type in, it's in metro.co.uk, so you know, and it's from May 21st. Flat Earther used a spirit level to prove that the Earth is flat. And you know which article is, because when you scroll down in the middle of it, it has a poll. It's like, what do you think? Do you think the Earth is flat or not? And in fact, I think there's three choices. One of the choices is like, duh, I always knew. So yeah, in fact, I'm, after this is over, I am going to, I'm going to save this one off to the side, and I'm going to go to that poll and see, see what the poll's up to, because it's been a while. That was May 21st, so that was several weeks ago. Awesome. And, and I'm sorry, guys. By the way, you can keep trying to call if you want. It's 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And again, I will try to reset this sucker sometime after the second break. And you never know with this. I, I do not do not know what, uh, in fact, what version am I on? Maybe, hopefully this didn't upgrade on its own. No, nope, 7.3. Okay. This one's called Confirmation of Bird's Diary. Mark, have you ever had contact with Bird's family (laughs) to confirm the contents of his diary that is presently online? Thanks, Ron D. Leatherman. His last name is actually Leatherman. See, I thought that was just a brand name for that multiplier tool. No, I have not had contact with anybody in Bird's family. I don't know if anybody's had contact. I don't know if there's any surviving members of the family. Because remember, his son died uh, not too long ago, and and the yep, sorry two five four, I'm looking at you, but I can't pick up the call. So no, the short is short answer is no, I have not been in contact. But if you guys and if you guys don't know who Admiral Bird is and you don't know what I'm talking about, type in Richard E. Bird television interview on YouTube, and you'll find probably some raw footage. I mean, there's the Flatters community's jumped all over it. But you'll find the raw footage. It's from a CBS affiliate. The show is from 1954. It's called The Long Jeans Chronoscope. Excellent quality, by the way, for 1954. I mean, they, somebody must have converted it straight from studio tape to digital because it's, it's, a, it's a great, you know, there's very little degradation at all. This one's called, check this out, Mark, Flat Earth and Video Games. Even in the freaking games, they have it. Just in all our faces. Wow, keep up the good work. I'll have more to say, but I'll email you another time. Not much time right now. Just wanted to send me this. Yeah, somebody sent me a video. I think it was from Grand Theft Auto where somebody jumped out of a plane. And he was, as he was plummeting to his death, he was, uh, uh, he was taking a, a movie of what was going on. And he noticed that the horizon line was, was perfectly at, at viewer, viewer level as he was plummeting to his death. And yeah, all video games, with the exception of ones that are, are going way out of bounds to try to make it curved, all video games are flat. They're on a perfectly flat plane, much like a, a planar surveyor. Because when they're when they're building the games, it's much easier to build all the physics and everything around a flat world. And the same thing with Warcraft, which is why I was so irritated when I went into Warcraft uh, during their last expansion, and they actually had a globe sitting on the table with the globe with the map stretched around the globe. I was going, "Oh, that's horrible!" Because I know full well that the the map is perfectly flat. We all know this, and yet now that you know, there's brand new players that are in there. Come, especially kids are looking. Oh, yeah, the Warcraft. It's it's a globe. Oh, no, it's not. It's not a globe. You look at the maps; they're all perfectly flat. But just and they sh- but they put a globe on the table. I mean, talk about art imitating life. 
Oh, let's see. Quote from the peanut gallery. Computers are useless. They can only give you answers. What? Computers are useless. They can only give you answers. Pablo Picasso? Really? Pablo Picasso made a comment about computers? Uh, let's see here. Try uh, uh, Oh, yeah. By the way, let's try this. Uh, anyone out there that's listening that knows me, if you have my Skype connection already, let's, let's try this. And this is from the peanut gallery. Nope, nope, not 254. Uh, anyone that already knows me, though, try to get a hold of me through your Skype connection. I can absolutely add one of those to a call right now. In fact, if this doesn't work, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask other people to join in if I can. And maybe that'll snap it out. Because remember, we haven't sacrificed anybody to the call volcano, which is what ha- happened a couple weeks ago, where somebody came in twice and just killed everything, but then the person that followed them was fine. So the call volcano was appeased. I know it's kind of weird. I'm talking about a call, a phone call, volcano god that likes to eat callers. Okay, this one's called Domed Flat Earth Model I Made. Oh, yeah, and I used that as a thumbnail for Jaren's thing recently, which was uh, sent by Eddie Allencar from Flat Earth Japan, Banjo, whatever the the thing is. Hello, Mark Sargent. Greetings from, from Japan. It's been a while since I last wrote you. I just wanted to share some pics of a dome flat earth model I made. I posted some pics on a Facebook flat earth group and started getting requests for orders, but I'm not making them for selling. I'll soon post a video on my channel. Flat. Oh, there it is. Flat earth banjo, USA, Japan, and Brazil, which is one of the weirdest channel names ever because he's in Japan. What does that mean? He can also speak. Uh, what do they speak in uh, Brazil? Is that Portuguese? And what's the banjo got to do with it? Showing how I made it and how anyone can make one. I took it to our local Starbucks and we all talked about it on Saturday night. Uh, It was about Flat Earth. Big hugs, bro. Take care. Eddie Allen Carr. Awesome. Thank you, Eddie. Yeah, he sent a whole bunch of pics and I include them all in the slideshow. He's the guy sitting at Starbucks with the cool orange based uh, map. It's not, it's not just a standard AE map. It's a, it's a cool version of it uh, with a lot of details on all the countries and everyone's staring, you know, sta- standing around it. So it's really cool. And he, he's out of Japan currently. So thank you for that. That's awesome. And who else is out there? Oh, Laurel is listening to the show. Hey, Laurel, how are you? By the way, feel free to call in if you want to talk about anything and you don't have to call in. You can actually just do the Skype thing and I can, uh, and Picasso, Picasso died in 1973. Did I know this? Pablo Picasso died in 1973. Is that right? Is that accurate? I believe it. So, and yeah, yes. By the way, uh, Laurel, who's listening to the show, obviously she missed the beginning of the show because I already announced the Flat Earth debate coming up in Atlanta, Georgia, the weekend of August 5 and 6. Because I got a phone call earlier today from Kathy Dunson. 254, you can't get in yet. We haven't sacrificed anybody to the volcano god, so you're going to have to wait. But I love your persistence, though. That's awesome. And what else? The Yes, born October 25th, 1881 in Malaga, Spain. Died 1973 in Mogens, France. I did not know this. But, you know, the computer world wasn't that great in 1973, although they had enough to fake the space program. So that's awesome. And for those that missed getting a ticket for, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Next one. Sorry, I'm a little scattered right now. I'm just trying to read a whole bunch of different stuff. This one's called flat earth. What else? Hey, Mark greetings from Rhode Island. Love your videos. Can just put them on a while. I, while I work to distract me from how boring a job like any other can get monotonous. Boy, do I need distractions. Brain surgery gets boring after a while. <laughs> it's funny. Anyway, I started off like you into various conspiracies. Then I saw Hollow Earth, then Flat Earth. I was like, wow, I have to see what these morons are on about. Well, after watching a few, I was thinking, boy, these guys, you know what? I'm going to pick up a call. I, hope I can't even, I can't even add, I can't even add, uh, Candy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang up on her. I'm going to call her right back. Let's see if I can add her to group. Ready? Let's try this, guys. And hopefully everybody will add to group. Candy. Add to group. Call Skype. Oh, because I have a mobile as well. Tick, 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 tick. Tell me if I get hung up on 
peanut gallery. We're dialing. We're actually dialing out, and and I don't generally do that. I'm not using a phone. Your can, phone can, is working. Can you hear me? And I peanut can gallery, can you hear me? Peanut gallery. Oh, I know there's a time delay. He can't. Uh, but do you do you have me in the background, Candy? Uh, in the back. Oh no 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 no. Uh. -uh. So yeah, peanut know. gallery's oh. happy, which means officially this is now a call-in show. Because it or, works. or a call out show. <laughs> yeah, it's a call out show. I hate technology sometimes. I do. I worked in support my whole life. And even now, and, and people, you know, I disagree. I, and I, I'll let you talk in just a second, Kenny. I disagree with the uh, uh, that one guy that broke down the NASA video because he goes, he goes, you better pay attention to these special effects now because in t 10 years or whatever, we're not going to be able to tell the difference. I disagree. Because there is still huge weakness in developers. There's always going to be bugs, no matter what. Oh, how many different versions of, of software do we have? Even now, there's stuff updating your computer right now because there's bugs. So why am I saying this? Because the software that we're dealing with here. You know, Skype's been out for a while. Operating systems have been out for a while. And yet we still have problems. How are you, by the way? I'm good. I'm always good. good. Yeah. I'm just I'm I'm kind of upset about what's going on out here in the in in the world with these flat earthers with I mean not the flat earthers but I don't I, the 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 people trying to stop flat earth. Oh, the trolls. Yeah. Well, I don't even you want know, to give I, in, enough credit to call them that. They're just nameless, faceless. Yeah, jackass. I know, I know. Trolls are are cowards. I get it. And and look. I'm kind of got mixed feelings because on one, one side, they're very consistent, meaning trolls, the, the big thing of being a troll is you have to be anonymous. And 99% of my emails and 99% of my voicemails are pro. They're good. They're friendly because trolls don't want to make their identity known. They're, they're rocks from the dark. They're, they're you know, a shout from the mob. Now, from nowhere, you don't know who's yelling it, but but it's them that's yelling it. Uh, only once did any time did a troll actually, co you know, contact me and announce his name. Only once broke the first rule of being a troll, and that was because I was ignoring him, which is why I still tell people, you know, don't feed the trolls. Why did something happen today that was even yeah? More... Why what um, happened today? Red said he wasn't live streaming anymore because um, he had a DDoS attack on his um, website that. You know, I guess he paid a lot of money for that site. Now it got down. It got taken down. The, and, you know, he, the his yeah, his pro, his, pro, his provider done. pulled it because of a a denial of service. Uh, yeah, I don't know because I don't. I mean, I would think that he would be able to contact the provider and they can give him the IP addresses that um, initiated the attack or something. But of well, course, the end and. Well, kind of I know, and I, I did see that he was streaming for a while, and I did read the title of it, saying that he was he was going to bail on Flat Earth for a while. It, I still don't believe he's gone he's gone forever. Lots of people in Flat Earth. Say yeah, he that. said he's not going to live stream. He said he's still going to um, do videos, but well, honestly, I mean, he got, go ahead. So he got um, porn bombed three times um, the day before yesterday. Wait, think, which, which, yesterday, which guy is this? Fred. Uh, you've been, ex you, you, you've been yeah. exposed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, somebody did to me the other night too. What they, they, they porn bombed you. Okay. What happened was, um, something had happened in the middle of my stream. I killed my stream and I started a new one. Well, thank you for Zulu. Vincent's the one that made me start the new stream because of, a, I don't even know, but if it wasn't for them too, Zulu fell asleep on my stream. Right. Shocker. So yeah. when I get out of that hangout, it was still active. Because Zulu was in there. Somebody well, got in. I, yeah, I went to sleep and I passed controls to somebody who also fell asleep. And so the two that were on there, it was like one of them had done a couple live streams. One of them, it was their first time. Nobody knew anything about anything. But the one thing I said before I left, in all caps, do not share this link with anybody for any reason. Well, and they did. They, well, they, somebody dropped it in the chat room and retracted it after the person who had never done it before didn't know what they were doing. So they dropped out of the call and then the guy, the other guy dropped the, the link in the chat then retracted it. He got in there. Well, so did somebody else, but well, it, it, doesn't... Wasn't, it wasn't the link to the new hangout. It was the link to the previous hangout all by a mistake. And that's God how it got was looking in. out. For me. Yes. Because I woke up 
and it was like six o'clock in the morning. I saw that person got in there. They were still in there when I, I went back in there, but I didn't realize that I was in the old hangout. And so I was like, who is this person? And the guy was like, oh, you just missed a lot. I, I'm not even going to say on here what he was doing, but if that had been on air, mine would have been shut down too. So, And for people that don't know, if you're listening to this and you don't know what's going on, because we're the, the Flat Earth movement has reached a, a different level where there's a whole bunch of live hangouts happening all the time. Unfortunately, people have forgotten that security on live hangouts is very important. It's no different. Remember, YouTube, for a live hangout, YouTube treats you like an apartment in an apartment building. And if some, no matter what happens, your hangout is considered an apartment. Whatever happens to that apartment building, it's your fault. It doesn't matter, you know, because eventually the, you'll say, well, I wasn't, you know, the I didn't burn down the bathroom. You know, I didn't start the fire. It's like they'll come back and say, well, you let the guy in who did. Therefore, you're responsible. No different, you know, the cops, you, you know this routine. The cops say it all the time. It's like you're responsible for the people at your party. And so what people are doing is they're going in, they're sneaking, they're it, not necessarily, it's usually because somebody's careless about showing a hangout. Again, putting it in chat, putting it on their, leaving it on their screen when they're screen sharing. Because all you have to do is print screen, you know, or, you know, and and then save it, and you you blow it up, and there it is, and you can type it in. And when you get in, most people don't know about this in YouTube, but if you broadcast porn, YouTube, remember, it's a family friendly environment. They will, it's it's there's no second chances. They blow you out, and you're gone. And See, that's so why I'm that, very careful about. Oh, my you life. gotta be careful, and and you know the once the trolls figured this out, and I, you know, we're only talking about a couple of them here. It's it became a shooting gallery because you know the the flower community is so loose with with hangouts or used to be, and yep. uh, people are saying, you know, in fact, people have been bugging me. It's like, oh, Mark, why did you do hangouts? Like, dude, even if I was thinking about hangouts, which I'm not, I'm letting other people do hangouts. There is no way. I could, especially if you're running hangouts that are, you, you know, not picking on you, but if you're running hangouts five hours plus, the chances of you not making a mistake, you know, are, are pretty slim. If, you know, if well, you've got I've sl- never been sniped because I've never showed my link. I know how to do it. Lucky. Even if you hit, even if you hit, you have to share the application, not the screen. And even if I have to share my whole screen, all you have to do is delete the URL before you, you share it. I mean, it's that simple and people still. I know. I don't know, but you know how people are. They get they people get lazy. Like, they get night. What are you doing? Well, how come they've never done it to you? Because I'm not. I'm very careful with what. And I've. Ha- it's not like I. I think mean, I figured the URL thing out by myself. But people have showed me what to do. People, I'm lucky. I've had people like Vincent and Antonio and uh, well, other, you, you, a lot of people have helped me. Plus, you've learned through the death of others. I mean, you've seen yeah. what can what can go wrong. Bro, Sanchez got a feel for that guy. Yeah. You know? And I, I'm not going to mention anybody by name here, but when it look trolls, I, I and I don't know why they don't listen. It's like, look, karma is a real thing. It's tangible. It's like a fog that you can't see. It may not be quick, but it will find you. It absolutely, it is unavoidable in the long run. I mean, you can run for a while. But it's, it's, but that's fine. You you don't want to listen, and and that's part of the flat Earth mantra anyway. Which is look, if this that place was started messaging me today, that person in particular who we're talking about, yeah, yes, oh, man, for a long time, and I was just yeah. like, you know what, this is ridiculous. You're wasting my time. You're speaking in riddles and parables. You make no sense. You're, I, I have nothing. I mean, I completely told you how I feel about the situation. Oh, we can be best friends. We don't have too. Much, we're not that different. We are completely different. Oh, ever. I said, I'm not some naive girl that you they take me at. You're not going to manipulate me. I'm sorry. And he finally stopped. Good. Good. Excellent. And I would never try to manipulate you, hot sex candy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't say anything <laughs> funny, hot sex. I didn't. The, um... <laughs> no, no. As, oh, far as, as far as trolls are concerned, I hate them. Because they they they're everything I don't stand for, which is you know the they're cowards. They always have been. They always will be. Uh, you you know you want to. Uh, it's sorry. I could go on. I could go on about trolls. They just they skin under my skin. But it's all right. Though everyone gets the get what's what what is what did I call it so a few months ago? It's the Karma Cafe. 
There are no menus. You get what you deserve. What goes around comes around. Yeah, it does. It does. It's, it's absolutely true. I've seen it happen so many times in the past. 612, I'm sorry you're calling, but I, I, I still can't. I'm, I'm going to have to reboot after this break, next break. You know, I but, want to know this too. Somebody in your chat is asking about, um, I'm sorry to just change the subject, but I don't want to just let it go when I'm looking at it and I'm talking to you. So oh, I you're looking at the TFR you. chat? Yeah, somebody's asking about that. You know, um, when you and Zen Garcia had that chat about the um, somebody proving the globe, I think uh, that's all oh, I heard. Yeah, the, 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 big, the, big, the big money, yeah. Yeah, a lot right. of people have been asking me about that too, and somebody in the chat's asking. Oh, if it's real, um, heck, let me pull up the, the thing again. If you want to contact the person in question, you need to call or get a hold of Kathy Dunson. She works with Zen Garcia. Her email address is P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A 77 at gmail.com. She'll give you all the details for it. As a matter of fact, from what I understand, the debate where Zen Garcia is going after Stephen Pigeon down in, in Atlanta, Georgia, that, that actually is on the line. They, he's he's doing this with the full intention of proving the globe. So he's not going to do it. What if they lose? I don't think it, wait, who, the globalists? Globalists? No, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously. Oh, the really globalists don't lose anything. That's the oh, suck okay. part. You know, all they lose is, is, is integrity. You know, that's all they lose is, like, well, they were proven wrong, which is why, and I've said this for a while now. I got two minutes and change to the break, just so you know, and then I'll get ready, which is. <laughs> They, sorry, I don't mean get ready. I mean throw you away. Um, by that, I mean just with prejudice. So the, the reason why we don't get any academia people to come out against Flat Earth is you don't want to be that guy. You do not want to be the guy that goes up against Flat Earth. And remember, and remember what I said, you've got to win. You've got to win fast, and it's got to be decisive. And if you can't do it, you've lost. It is, it is the Rocky scenario where Rocky's in the ring with Apollo Creed. Apollo should take him out immediately, and he's not, and he can't do it. And then all of a sudden, Apollo is in trouble, and everyone's looking. It's like, holy smokes, Rocky's a legitimate thing, and Flat Earth is a legitimate thing. No one in academia can, can do anything about it. We, we haven't yet found a professor from any university. They are hiding under their desks. They do not want to face this. So... Anyway, uh, I'll give the last minute to you. What, uh, any, anything you want to I'm chat? not, I don't want to say about what, but thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> I cried all yeah. day. Today. <laughs> really? The, the phone sex was that bad? It was. Sorry. I ha- Do you know that video that we did that time? Remember I said I was going to name it, um, Mark Sargent has phone sex. That is the name of my video. And it yeah, has less I know. than anything. I know. Like most of my videos have like, 1.5k views in like a day. That video only has 400 views still. I'm like, this is so clickbait and nobody's clicking the it. Gods, like, get it. The gods of this world sometimes protect me. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why, but it's been that way my entire life. I can't explain it. It is, it is I have dodged almost literal bullets and I, and I don't know why. Not that I deserve it. But it is part of part of it is because I was ignorant when I was younger and I just kind of walked through minefields. But I don't know why it's doing it now because I am no far from for. innocent now. Um, I guess, you, I, go- you know what? I said that the other day. I, well, not so much, but I said once that happened with that guy coming in and trying to get my sh- channel shut down, I said I always felt like it was like I was supposed to be doing that. Like oh, so yeah. many people email me and message me and tell me how much. I've changed their life because they were able to talk about whatever, oh, oh, you know, wait, wait, before, before you go, cause we're going to break here in a second. Uh, quote from peanut gallery. Candy is oh, nature's God. way of making up for Mondays. Oh, well that's finally a good one. <laughs> so, quote, we're playing music. There it goes. All right. I will, uh, I will talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Bye. Yeah. You are now tuned into the Truth Frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Major Tom. Major 
Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. And uh, yeah, we're having some problems with phone stuff. So right now I'm making outbound calls. <laughs> and now my outbound call is to Zulu One YouTube channel in New York. New York. How's it going? How's it going, man? Hello, Mark. How are you doing tonight? I cannot complain. You don't have to be so formal with me. Hey, a call out show is pretty good too. A call out show. Did, that's that's I that's did that last good. week. Did you? Yeah, I set up a, a number. I went to um online and I got a like a you know, not a fake number, but a number, you know, with an email so they wouldn't get my number. And I ended up calling out to someone that was uh talking in the chat and it turned out to be uh your caller from Texas, Shana, who called like three or four times in one show and stuff like that. That one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. You know what? As I was thinking about this, this um the, the call out show and, and I'm gonna well, no, I'm not gonna put the microphone down. This could be tied to the uh the station. Because beforehand I remember if everything was perfectly fine on my side, if we if we rebooted the Skype server uh, at the station, it would be it would be fine. But I don't want to do it right this second. Maybe we'll do it for the last segment. Okay, yeah, because last week it worked perfect. What I know, last, I mean, literally flawless. Nobody got sacrificed to the volcano god. Nobody got no. Nobody got dropped because of connection speed. And I've got a ton of bandwidth now. I've got I've yeah. got monster bandwidth, so uh, there strange. shouldn't be. I eh. Skype's so funny, but I did have to. I do have to. I did have to downgrade to um, seven point three. I think so. I'm like five, oh. six versions back. Because Microsoft, yeah. most people don't know this, and I actually had looked this up, and and uh, Peanut Gallery helped me, where it is it is a flaw, it is a known bug. When Microsoft bought out Skype, they uh, they produced a bug where you cannot have a normal Skype call and a phone call merging at the same time. Kind of like you know what we're trying to do here. It won't work. Right. So I can do Skype calls, and I can do I can do multiple multiple Skype connections, or I can do just a phone, but I can't merge the two, for whatever reason. So anyway, what's going on in your world? <laughs> Not much. Uh, just hanging out. It's been a, an interesting week. I Candy beat me to uh, the weekly wrap up. Crazy <laughs> the shit that people the troll assholes have been doing to people. It is not yeah, right. I know, I know. But it goes. If you want a silver lining, if there is such a thing, that's how polarizing this topic is. That it offends yeah. them. On you want to know how bad it, it, and trolls are listening to this. You want to know how bad oh, yes, they are. Oh, okay. If, if you want to know how bad your conditioning is, this is what it's making you do. Have you ever even thought of doing this with any other topic? And I put this challenge out to anyone. I don't care what we're talking about. Uh, uh, abortion, gay rights, black rights, right. um, uh, <laughs> women's right. rights, right. stem cell research. You not does right. not matter. None of those topics raise such an instant ire in people. And for some, remember I, I said that like the, a very small percent of the population just will not be able to handle this. This is those right. th that that small percentage. That's a fraction of one percent, but they they just want they want the flat earthers to go away. They don't want them around anymore. And if that means stooping to oh awful awful dirty pool tricks, then oh, yeah. that's that's what they're gonna do. And I mean, you just, they have no idea the amount of negative karma they are generating. The, you oh, know, it's cool. it's it's nothing short of a, a cruise missile. That'll eventually come their way. 
not literally. I'm not saying I'm running the. I'm not in the drone room tonight, anyway. Uh, but no drone attack. No, no. I'll, have, I'll uh, have my handler call your handler. Yeah, <laughs> we'll set that up. <laughs> it's it's Tuesdays. I told her, I got I got a show on Tuesdays. It's like we got briefing and debriefing. And you got some training. It's no like, drone strike Tuesday. Come on, what's it's wrong? It's no drone strike Tuesday. Yeah, it's to be the running joke. That'll be po- probably posted on the agency refrigerator <laughs> when I come in tomorrow. Yeah. It'll be in the lunchroom. Yeah, it'll be in the lunchroom. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's oh, awful what they do. But at the same time, they can't get, grab everybody. Look what happened to Stephen Christ. Now, granted, Stephen wasn't wasn't prone to doing the dirty stuff. But there, it, it's gotten so big now. I, look, look, ODD's 24-7 channel, that's still up. Even that's after all awesome. the stuff. Even after all the stuff that's you've awesome. been pulling. I, I know you've been exposed. It's going to take a break for a while. Fine. I didn't take a break for yeah. a while. You're going to bring down TFR? I'd like to see you try. And he said, you know, he said he's just going to slow it down. He's just not going to do every day. He's going to back off. I hear him. I mean, yeah. it's one thing to attack your YouTube channel. That's free. But when you yeah. start attacking people's livelihood, because it was his gamer website that they attacked. It had nothing to do with the flat earth crap. That's annoying. You know? And he said he was like $2,500 he spent on having somebody build him the website, and it's gone. Pieces has gone? Crap. Well, that's what I said. I was like... You I'm sure he it. has, right? Somebody has to have done a backup with it. Of course. I mean, just because the website's down, people were telling him that it was gone. Gone. I was eh, like, well, I don't, I don't gotta buy be it. Way to retrieve it. I don't know how. I'm sure yeah, there's, there's a backup. More to that. But so, yeah, that's. Just oh, by the way, quote up. for you. Um, oh, I have it too. It is no harm to be an ass if one is content to bray and not kick. That's from Mark Twain. <laughs> I like that one. That's a good one. You got it. Yeah, I got a response. It is wiser to find out than to suppose. Simple. Oh, it's good. Wiser Simple. to find out than suppose. And that's, that's awesome. what I, I mean. A lot of people do that. That's for sure. You know, I mean, like, I, I'll be honest. I, I'm with you on on probably 99.99% of everything you say. There might be one or two things that uh, maybe I don't really agree with. But I realize that we, neither of us can know 100%. We haven't gone up there. We're, you know, going on the information we're gathering down here. Oh, yeah. And that's fine. You've heard me say that, uh, look, if if there's no dome, if there's no firmament, I am not going to lose. I am seriously, I'm not going to like crawl up into a, a fetal position and start crying. It's like, right. so what? <laughs> right. some, somebody, somebody's going to be right and somebody's going to be wrong. But that doesn't yeah. mean that the other people should be upset about it. This is different from like religion where eight out of every, you know, <laughs> if there's five major religions and I, again, I don't want to make fun of religion here because I'm, you know, I'm a religious person, but you don't necessarily want to turn it into a horse race because if there's five major religions, that means there's five horses and you better be darn sure you're betting on the right one. Yeah. Cause, cause exactly. only one wins. And, and I don't want to, you, know, you don't want to be glib, but s- to use the statement, it's like, look, first God that shows up wins. So you better hope it's yours. Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. Anyway, yeah. what if um, it turns out it was the Dogon, the Dogon tribe. They were the ones that were right. <laughs> got it all wrong. Yeah, you know? <laughs> turns out it was the flying spaghetti monster. It was the shoe. The shoe. It's the, it's the no. It's the gourd. <laughs> I still love that skit. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, it's the Monty Python <laughs> life, life of Brian, where Brian is considered the Christ, and he drops his shoe, and everybody thinks it's a great symbolic religious moment, and and literally. They they form religions in the in what twenty seconds thirty seconds yeah. based on yeah. the shoe. It's like we were meant to collect shoes. No, we're meant to 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 wear only one shoe. And then the other woman that comes at the end, she goes, "No, it's the gourd." And they're like waving her off. It's like, oh my lord! There's no no plan words there. Um, I love it. Hey, I got a I got a movie for you real quick. I I think we may have talked about it already, but I wanted to just bring it up again real quick. Uh, that movie Silent Running. I don't remember oh, yeah. if you're uh, 72, I believe it came out. Old, one of the older uh, submarine movies. 
No, no. This oh, was... no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of completely different Silent Running. Silent Running yeah. with uh, Durst. Yeah, uh, Dern. 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 Um, Dern. Bruce Dern. Yes, that's the one. That's Bruce Dern, the one. where he was a lone mechanic type guy on a spaceship with hydroponics on it that was going off into space. Yeah. Yeah. With those stupid yeah, little yeah. robots that preceded R2-D2. They were called drones in that movie. Right. They weren't droids right. or robots. They were drones. Right. Was what they were referenced to. We're not even and supposed we- to say droids anymore. You know, Lucas owns the rights to that word. Does he? Did you know that? So what, what's the phone? Who makes the droid phone? The Android? Motorola? Yeah, yeah. He, basically, every time you buy one of those phones, George Lucas gets money. Because he bought the rights <laughs> to... To the slang version of it when they were doing those commercials droid you know that whole thing sure yeah he gets money off of every one of those phones so it's not that many because how many people own droids yeah but still i I know right i know can you imagine the marketing people it's like right on we've got this great thing and lucas's lawyers come in it's like yeah you're gonna be you're gonna be oh brian says and i'm sorry uh he peanut gallery says android is the operating system Thank you, Peanut Gallery. Right, right. And Android is the operating system. Android right. is, is the, the operating system. All phones but Apple and Windows use it pretty much. Well, yeah, all phones but Apple and Windows. Apple has, what, an 80% market share? <laughs> so Yeah, I just left Apple and went to a Droid phone. Everybody out there listen to me. They suck. Go to Droid. <laughs> Get rid of your Apple phone. It can't uh, do... It can't do half the stuff this phone can do. I'm an I'm a moron. I've been fighting oh, it for years. Oh no! How how long is your yeah. contract? Yeah. Oh god. Well, no. I, I just got a new one. I just got a Galaxy S7, and it does oh. so much more than an Apple can do. You know, I I gotta say, and I don't mean to be insulting Apple people, but Apple phones are for stupid people. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is so dumbed down. The interface, everything. When I went into this phone, it took me two days to get all the settings and everything right because it's like a PC. It does so much more, so much more. Unbelievable. Right. Unbelievable. Cool. And I'll shut up after this. The other tidbit about that movie, mm-hmm. the director of Silent Running was the special effects guy, the head special effects guy on Kubrick's 2001 Space Odyssey. Oh, nice. And he, nice. he was the director. They had a million dollar budget and they did it inside a defunct aircraft carrier was where they filmed the movie. Ah. Yeah, pretty I'm, interesting. I'm heading, I'm heading on a what was that? Uh, nothing. I'm letting the, um, letting oh, the studio sorry, sorry. know. No, it's okay. I'm letting the studio know. Uh, but, so if I drop you for whatever reason, let me know. He's, he's writing me back. Uh, I got a movie mm-hmm. for you. Uh, get out. It just came out on DVD. It's like a kind of a dark horse pick about uh, inter- an interracial relationship that turns into a horror movie. And oh yes, they, it was like Stepford Wives or something. Right? Oh is that my what lord! It is? Oh yeah, is that what it's, it is? it's bad. It is bad news. I mean, it's a great movie actually, but right, talk right. about a movie that that plays in the fears of. Uh, I mean, that movie could pretty much start a race war by itself <laughs> because I mean, it, there was a line that Cedric the Entertainer said. Which was, I think, perfect. He says, um, <coughs> uh, he, he he was making fun. He's going, you know, ma- black people versus white people. He goes, don't be scared of black people. Black people tell you up front they're going to kick your ass. He goes, it's white people you got to be afraid of. He goes, he goes, white people, they'll chop you up in little pieces and bury you under the front porch. And he goes, and then they'll pretend to be part of the search party the next morning. <laughs> Yeah, and he and he uses the microphone as a flashlight, like he's pretending he's part of the the uh, the search party. He's going, Katie, where are you, Katie? <laughs> Trying to pretend he's a white guy. Oh, that's that's what that movie is in a nutshell, and that is <sighs> everything you've ever heard. I mean, uh, honestly, it's it's it makes you feel. Ba- I mean, we were watching this even as a white person. You're watching this, going, you know what? It's not that crazy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> white right. people do some crazy nutty stuff, and that's what this movie was about. So I'm not going to ruin it for you. Just know that right. it isn't, it, it's totally worth it. Totally worth <laughs> it if you want to. If I mean, you're watching this, and you, it is a smart, uh, intelligent movie. And even though it's a little campy, 
totally worth it. Uh, right. Anyway, I'm going to let you go, and we're going to see if we can we're going to see if we can get some callers. I'm going to I'm going to try to reset this sucker and see what happens. Okay. Awesome, awesome. It was right. great talking to you. And okay. that's too funny. If 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 the movie's making you feel guilty for being white, it's probably pretty done pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, man. Funny. All right, have a good one. Thanks for uh, thanks. Uh, I'm going to do a little hangout later. I don't know if you uh, want to stop. Bye. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay, I am back up, says me. So, Peanut Gallery, with the delay, can you hear me now? And this is in the last segment, so I'm going to have to edit part. Oh, you know what? I may not edit this part out. Sometimes you got to just go with it. And Peanut Gallery is saying, yes, back up. Holy smokes, this may actually work. 215, here we go. 215 area code, can you hear me? 215, 215. Area code, can two five hear me? And no, two one five cannot hear me. The microphone is dead on them. Oh man, it was close though. We tried. I'm still gonna, you know, at the next break, I'm still gonna try to reboot this sucker. Sacrifice, yes, to the volcano god. Absolutely. Uh, he is still there. Nope, two five four is trying. 303 is trying, 303 is trying again. Sorry, guys, it's not going to happen before the break. I feel bad, because I know you guys wanted to do a call-in show, but then 215, now I'm losing control of how many people are trying to call in after the reboot. Just not, it's not happening. For whatever reason, I, you know what, I'm going to have to do some tests after this show is over, just to see if I can get the sucker back up. Oh, yeah, Flat Earth News. So I'm going into YouTube and I'm typing in Flat Earth and we're setting the filter to one week and seeing what's happening out there. And in fact, let's just do it again because it's been at least an hour and a half since we started this. And who knows what happened in the last hour and a half. You've been exposed. It's still doing his podcast after hours and hours. Infinite Plain Society is doing his Flat Earth Report. That's another live thing that's happening. 24-7 ODD Reality is doing his thing. Dr. Zach went after the curved water found debunked. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Celebrate Truth. That's Robbie Davidson. He did Impossible, the Flat Earth documentary from 2017. Awesome. Thrive and Survive from two days ago. Flat Earth Evidence for the Cover-Up. Great. Flat Earth Asshole is doing a Flat Earth Gathering tonight in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's happening as we speak, right this second, down in a bar. So you guys can check that out if you get a chance. The, let's see what else here. Just going through the list. If anything strikes me. Globebusters, In Search of the Lost Ark. That's awesome. Infinite Plane Society has got a slew of videos. He's just on a freaking tear. Love it. He's like the raid commander. I'm not supposed to say raid, but let's call it what it is. The Flat Earth now has the ability to pretty much jump into any live chat and... Let it be known that the flat earth is a real thing. And we not necessarily take over the conversation, but we dominate it. And we're friendly and we're constructive and nobody gets hurt. And we're in there for a few minutes and then we're out. And we expose a lot of people to the flat earth concepts and it's fantastic. We, we've done, I think, a, a, a lot of positive things. Now, does it annoy people? Sure. So, well, they're going to hate us more and more. Going, well, a lot of people already hate flat earth. So we're just bringing it to them. That's all we're doing. And Peanut Gallery says, shameless plugs, what, in closeworld.com? Yeah, everybody knows that site. Just go to my YouTube channel. And also promote, uh, you know what, let's do a shameless plug, and that is 
what, what is it called? The tfrwater.com. Is that what it's called? Let me go to my dialogue here. And that is, yeah, go to tfrwater.com if you want to, if you guys are into survival gear, if you're looking for uh, water filters, check out tfrwater.com. There's a shameless plug for you. And yes, tomorrow, unless something goes wrong, unless she's fashionably late by several hours, I'm going to be with Patricia Steer on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes because that's what we do Wednesday afternoons at 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern. And bonus points if you can tell me how many time zones there are in the United States. I bet you your first answer is probably wrong. But I will be, that's where I'm going to be tomorrow afternoon with Patricia Steer. And I'm looking at the second page of Flat Earth News, see if there's anything out there that catches my eye. No, 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 peanut gallery. It is not five. The but but you're actually that's actually some e- decent foreshadowing because there may be five. Right now there's four, and that is there is Pacific, there's Mountain, Central, and Eastern. Most people forget Mountain because that's the the zone with the least amount of population in it. But the fifth time zone, which has not happened, but they're actually thinking about it this year is going to be Maine, because that's the Atlantic time zone. No, no, Hawaii does not count. Nobody, I don't even know the name of that one, whatever time zone that is, the West Pacific or whatever that it is. No, Hawaii does not count. Because if you're going to do that, then it's going to be six. Then you're going to throw in Alaska, because I think part of Alaska actually slips into a different one as well. So it's in the USA. Fine. You know, they're considered the freak states. I saw that on The Simpsons. Alaska and Hawaii, nobody counts those. Might as well count. Why don't you count Puerto Rico while you're at it? No, I'm saying there's four major ones. The fifth one was, again, Maine was considering jumping into Atlantic time zone because Canada actually has at least five. And Atlantic. So they have Pacific, Mountain, Central, Eastern, and Atlantic. There you go. I know. It's trivia you guys do not care about. Uh, I also reproduced, if you guys didn't already notice, the Flat Earth testimonials from YouTube channel Jaronism. I called it Flat Earth Power, and I used the the, uh, the thumbnail from Flat Earth Banjo, which, and the reason I wanted to do that was I was trying to get the attention of somebody who was looking into Flat Earth, and I I put in the testimonials from Indonesia, and I wanted that one next to it. So if you guys want wondering why I put a Jaren video from, plus it's a good video, everyone should watch it at least once. It's it's great. What you want you want to be part of a community, watch Flat Earth Testimonials. And I couldn't find the original on Jaren's channel anyway. Jaren's got a lot of videos on there and it took me a while because I think it's from last year. And yes, there, there's time and temperature.com time zones. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. No, no, six, no, no, four. Most 90, 90 something percent of the population result resides in four time zones. Okay, enough about time zones. Let's do email. Or uh, unless somebody else I can, I can get a hold of, somebody else wants me to buzz them, I can do it through uh, through Skype. But right now we are not taking inbound calls. And I'm sorry, I promise I will make an effort to try to fix this before next week. I don't know what's going on. We really don't. Everything seemed fine and I followed all the steps and everything was beautiful. But that's all right. Again, nothing lost. It's not like we had dead air or anything. Really? Three minutes till break? All right. Then we'll try this one more time, I guess. Unfortunately, this machine takes so long to boot up that there's no way I'm going to be able to do it in, in uh, five minutes or three minutes during the break. Okay, this one's called Flat Earth What Else? Hi, Mark. Greetings from Rhode Island. Love your videos. You can just... Oh, wait. No, I was already halfway through this one. Um, all it took me a good couple of months watching videos, checking the facts independently, and I watch a lot of YouTube until it fi- I finally wholeheartedly believed it. After all, when you look at At first, it seems too big to hide. Compartmentalization is easier than one would think. My question is, how many people do you think are in on it? Uh, I'll answer that question immediately. Hardly any. That's it. It's it's the exact opposite of what the globalists will try to tell you, which is, oh, everybody's got to be in it. Scientists and pilots and and everybody that works at NASA. No, no, no. This thing is so big that nobody... I mean, not not big as a metaphorical sense. I mean, physically, it is such a large concept. This structure is so big that you don't have to have anybody know except for the telemetry guys because if the outer edge is Antarctica, this giant field of ice, then nobody's going to reach the outer edge and nobody goes above civilian airline altitude, which is at about 10 miles. 
they cap out at about 10 miles. I know most of the time it's cruising altitude, which is like seven miles, but nobody goes above that. So who do you need to tell? Remember, in this case, less is more, meaning you don't have to tell anybody. Uh, the only tel telemetry guys when it comes to NASA, so anybody that builds rockets or whatever, they don't have to know crap. In fact, the astronauts, all you have to do is tell them that they don't have the clearance to ask the questions. And that works very, very well. So anyway, uh, to get back there, there's got to, there has to be a lot, even though they are compartmentalized over the years like astronauts. No, I completely disagree. Also, the people in the know like the astronauts. Do you think, remember, there's only, even if you believe that all the astronauts went to space, there's only 500 astronauts worldwide that have ever even claimed to be, to, to gone to space. That is not a lot of people. 500 people compared to 7 billion. Uh, let's see, do you think they're driven by threat or maybe they're given a story telling them the people in the know, like the astronauts, do you think they're uh, of some threat, or like some other story scaring them to lie? Yeah. You tell them you don't have clearance. That is everyone's Air Force personnel now. So they don't have to deal with what Apollo did. Well, Apollo astronauts were, were turned into basket cases. They crawled into bottles. They became recluses. The guys now, you just don't tell them. It's like, look, you don't, you don't have to know. You just have to know that you're faking something. That's all they tell them. They say the Flat Earth cr uh, is a crazy idea. I made a video under my YouTube channel, Space Shot 76, called Flat Earth Crazy. Try Big Bang Theory. All right, so we're going to go. Talk to you in a bit. We are TFR. My faith in destiny is all I need to prevail. Truth Frequency Radio. No, I'm not singing at Peanut Gallery because I can't sing that song, which was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to hang up on this one call, and we're just going to keep going with emails until I can figure out what's going on with my setup. But that's okay. Again, I've got emails, nothing lost. This one's called Conference. And the topic is invite Rogan to the conference from Rick Mayer. He also says age is relative. Only your relatives should know your age. That's like a bad greeting card. But REM said that. That's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, as far as Joe Rogan coming to the conference, he's never going to show up. He wouldn't dare at this point. There's too, there's too many things that could go wrong. And it, it, honestly, people... He his safety couldn't even be guaranteed. There'd be certain as as polite as the flat Earth community is. There's certain people that would have a hard time getting out of there without a whole bunch of abuse. One is NDT. One is Joe Rogan. One is Bill Nye, the Science Guy. I think Michio Kaku could make it through without a single problem. I don't think anyone would even harass him. The ghost of Carl Sagan, he'd probably be okay. So. And I'm so sorry, 254 has been trying all night, and it's not going to happen. So, let's get right to it. This one's called Rad Flat Earth Merch, Shameless Self Promo. Hey, Mark, hope is all, all is well, man. Love your work. I've been thinking about how I can help spread awareness about the reality of our flat and stationary Earth and thought the best way was to make some rad flat Earth shirts with the use of pop culture to kind of subtly, and in some cases not so subtly, get the message out. My goal is to produce a bunch and bring them to the Flat Earth Conference in November with or without shirts. I plan to be there either way. Can't wait. Anyway, if you don't mind the shameless self-promotion, could you let my Flat Earth brothers and sisters know that they can check out the shirts at flatearthmerch.com. Flat Earth, M E R C H dot com. Thanks, man. You're the best. Hope to see you in November. Regards, Ryan Nolan, creative director at, oh, I'm not supposed to say what company it is. If you read on the QA show, don't read this part. Okay. 
Got it. Oh, yeah, and there's some some cool pictures uh, of all this. Space sucks, stay flat, liars. Oh, it's excellent. Cool. It's great. Yeah, whoever's there's going to be a lot of flat earth merchandise there, which will be fun because it will be all in one place and it'll be like a fevered pitch. I know I'll be getting some stuff. If no one else is there to call, I should sing. No, I'm not going to sing Joe Jackson. Dude, I can't sing that range. I can't do it. I'm, I'm more of a crooner. I, I don't, uh, Joe Jackson is, I mean, yeah, he's a crooner, but it's more high pitched. So anyway, this one's called Antarctic Treaty. Hey, Mark, I am a peace officer from Ohio, a Christian and flat earther. I've read the Antarctic Treaty multiple times, each time going through and highlighting important parts. The most interesting that I came across is on the first page of the summary. The line says to conduct studies of the earth and its cosmic environment. They like to hide the truth in plain sight, often using words with double meanings. There are two definitions of cosmic. The first is obvious, but the second drew my total attention. The definition is inconceivably vast. Synonyms are limitless, immeasurable, boundless, and infinite. I don't think they use this word to describe the earth by accident. Keep up the good work. That's from T. Lou. Thanks, man. That's awesome. And let's see. Got it. I may have to do a call out here in a minute. One second. Let me, uh, I'm going to get through one more email and then we'll do it. This one's called Watch Soyuz Rendezvous and Docking Explained on YouTube. It was sent to myself and DITRH. Good morning, gentlemen. This was passed along to me as proof for NASA and the ISS. Mark, it has what appears to be a docking sequence. Very poorly done, but it is video of a supposed docking. It would be great to see this taken on by the hive mind. Best regards, Ted, Jeremiah 17.7. And the video is called... Oh, it's put out by the European Space Agency. Yeah, it's called Soyuz Rendezvous and Docking Explained. Hmm, I may have to take a look at that. Awesome. Yeah, it's probably so, it's such poor, poor quality. What are we going to get out of it? But better than nothing... All right, let's see if we can bring somebody into the call. Come on, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Are you there? Yes, I am here. (laughs) Are we saying your name? I don't care. You can say my name. (laughs) Say my name. Say my name. (laughs) Yeah, that didn't sound deviant no. in the slightest uh this is uh, uh master gunner brian burton formerly of the u.s united states army because now you are officially out yes I have you've done your time I have. was there was there much of a was a was a ceremony kind of anticlimactic was there anything or you sign a piece of paper and just didn't have a ceremony you, no just got out give me my pat on the back and get out <laughs> no it's possible i don't know what yeah. they could do yeah, it's your choice. Yeah, kind of like when you're at um, well, what used to be Saturn when the, when there used to be Saturn dealerships, the uh, people would you had an option. Remember those Saturn commercials? You're old enough to remember. It's like this is Mark and it's his first Saturn, and they get all the employees around, they clap for you. Yeah, yeah that that was a real thing, and it was also optional because some people didn't want to be embarrassed. Yes, that was such a great thing. I I owned three Saturns. I loved them. I thought they were awesome, and I, I mostly loved them because I hated, I hate shysters. I hate card salesmen and attorneys and snake oil salesmen, those type of guys. So Saturn was great because it was no haggle, but because they had to staff it, they had to get car dealers or you know uh, salesmen from other lots. And these guys, you know, bad suits, you know, sleazy as they come. These guys, it, it, it was like they were neutered in a certain way, you know, because they couldn't. The, the price on the on the door was the price in the door, plain and simple. You could not haggle. I mean, yeah, you get a different warranty if you wanted, but that was about it. Yeah. Well, hey, I got something new for you. Yeah, what is it? Did you see the movie Logan yet? Logan? Yeah the yeah. The, the last the Boy. last Hugh Jackman appearance of an act as an X Men. Yes, excellent movie. Yeah, but did you catch the, um, for lack of better words, the background story of what had happened? 
Uh, oh, you mean leading up to him and Professor X going on the run? Well, no. The whole fact that all the mutants were gone, how they were gone. <sighs> oh. uh, genetically, uh, genetically the weeded government, out? The government had slowly introduced chemicals into the food oh. to have them so they stopped being born. Got it. Oh, right, 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 right. I do remember that. Yeah, that was, yeah, a form of eugenics, for lack of a better term. Right. Yeah. But I thought it was so, interesting how they put that little conspiracy in there of they slowly introduced it into, you know, the corn and the water and whatnot. Right. Until it progressed across the entire world, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That was interesting. You're absolutely right. And, 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 and a great... Uh, a great closure. You know, everyone said the same thing. I mean, it scored 90 something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. And even though I don't trust that meter as much as what I used to, the it, the, the reviewers all were, were spot on, which was, you know, if you want to go out as Hugh Jackman the, the, being your last Wolverine appearance, that's a great it's a great way to go. Oh, it was a great movie. Yeah. I have to set in the great. set in the future, you know, a lot of gritty, uh, still some mutants lying around all the old guard. For the most part, they're they're long gone, a far cry. But it's still not it's not my favorite X Men movie, or even you know. But it's still, again, superhero movies. Good. Do you know they've made they made six X Men movies so far and two Wolverines. That's amazing. It's a long time. That's that's why you know when when you see him in this, this is his seventh movie as Wolverine, and it's uh, again it's a great it's a great. No. Bu- Yes. You're wrong because there's three Wolverine movies. Wait, what was the second one? You got the Origins, that stupid one when he went to Japan that everybody wants oh, to forget. Oh, crap. I forgot about the Japan one. You're right. He did yeah. three on his own and six with X Men. So, Wolverine, yeah, okay, so, two, yeah. so it Wolverine 2 was like Highlander 2. Everybody wants to right. forget. It. Well, no, it wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't that bad. I mean, I, it was, you know, well, because no, if, you, if you followed the series, remember, I used to own a comic book shop. So if you followed Wolverine as a series, you knew there was a big Asian theme. He he did stuff. There were oh, several yeah. graphic novels which were set in Asia. It was it was really, I don't know why that was just one of his well, things. So let me ask you this: since how you're such a big comic nerd, oh boy, Logan, well, though it was a great movie, was really nothing like the comic Old Man Logan. I didn't. Okay, used to own a comic book shop. Old Man Logan was far beyond that day. Those days, I, I knew all the course. In fact, I'm looking at my shelves, and there's still a lot of core stuff here. But the, the the heyday of comic books came and went. You know, we all the great stories have been turned into movies now. I mean, I'm looking at like all the Sin Cities, uh, all the. You know, in fact, only only one story was not turned into a, uh, and I don't know what they're, if they're going to waiting for. If you guys want to read one of the finest comic comic or graphic novels of all time, it's Kingdom Come by Alex Ross and Mark Wade. It's, it's fantastic. If you get you. It'll come it's, around eventually. They're stuck with all the Avengers stuff and everything else. I them know. Off. Well, the Avengers members is a different universe. And they're trying to, to do something with DC. It's just... No! Uh, what? Avengers is the same universe as X-Men. No, 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 no. It's Justice League. Justice League is I, different, yes. Yes, I... Really? You're going to throw that <laughs> at me? Seriously? The Marvel and the DC <laughs> universes are separate, really? Come on. Well, like, unless you go to that one comic that combined them. Oh, I can't remember what that was. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that stuff. But anyways, why are we talking about comics? I have. Why no are we idea. talking about comics? Oh, because you mentioned Logan. Logan was a great little conspiracy thing. I liked it. But, yes. but but the guy you know the guy that mentioned the email where he was talking about Triple X, Xander Cage, he was absolutely right. The the beginning of that movie was complete globe conditioning. That's all it was. It was you know showing all these thousands of satellites. In fact, the the first scene was ridiculous because it showed. Remember, we were saying that 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 from a from an astronaut standpoint, the sky, the globe should be just bristling with silver flashes from all the the satellites shining from the sun. That's what it showed. It showed all these satellites, rows and rows and rows of them. And I'm looking, I'm going, when when did we see this? When when does this happen? Never. Never happened. But some people will say, oh, no, they're all up there. It's like, no, you saw it in a triple X movie, dude. Yep. 
because I'm sorry, I still believe even if the satellites were real, let's say they're real for a second, you would not see that little tiny thing no. from the ground. Nope. I mean, not through no. all the atmosphere. No. If it was in a vacuum, yeah, you might be able to. The the argument Maybe. which I've thrown at you, which is why can't you see Japan from San Francisco? And I say, okay, if you take if you take out the atmosphere, if you wipe it out, and you make sure that the water's dead calm, you know, turn it into a vacuum, which means it would probably freeze. The um, then you might be able to, actually, might be able to pull it off. Might. See Japan from from San Francisco if it was a vacuum. But since you can't test it, you can't because people may again it's common knowledge things. People keep forgetting. It's like, look, you think that's air you're breathing. <laughs> It's, but you don't know what the air is. It's one part oxygen to four parts nitrogen. I do want to make a quick comment. <laughs> Sorry. As you're dying. On that, as I'm dying, I retire, so it's time to die. Yeah. On the, uh, the, the guy that took the level on a flight. Oh, D Marble. Yeah. Yeah. Love the publicity of it and all that. Yeah. However, for all the listeners out there, won't prove anything. The level will not prove it. Because you will, you will, you will elaborate, yeah. Because scientists have covered their butts with that. Because if it was a ball and the gravity gets pulled to the center, then as the plane goes around, the level is going to stay level. However, if somebody could get a gyroscope sitting on their seat, because remember, the level is still bound by quote gravity. Yes, but you should see it bump every once in nope. a while. No, you shouldn't. Not if technically the plane is flying. This is how science has covered the butts. Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. Because it's always pointing to the center of the Earth and the plane's going around a curve. So if we could get someone to get a gyroscope, you mean tiny one on there for enough mileage, and if that doesn't turn, they have no defense against that because they say themselves gyroscopes are free and independent of um, gravity. Yeah, of everything. Fix the yeah. space. That's going to be a small order, though. On it. it is because you're going to have to get it on there and have it powered so it keeps spinning. Oh yeah, yeah. Once you once you spin up, and most people don't know what a gyroscope looks like. You put a device. I don't care how small it is on your tray table next to your drink and your peanuts. You fight. You spin that sucker up. <coughs> unless the people next to you know who you are, somebody is calling somebody. Although it would be a great way to get thrown off a plane. It would be because then you could say, oh, you know what? Hey, you know what? That's not bad because that's some, everybody that anytime they take a plane down nowadays, bring, you know, they, they bring it down manually the, uh, you know, for whatever, you know, unruly passenger forces plane, uh, yeah. uh, rerouting. If you did that for a flat earther, oh, that's just free publicity. That's awesome. However, if someone could put a gyroscope inside a box, look like an external hard drive or something, put your laptop up there and, you know, have it run and have a mark on there or something. I'm just giving suggestions out. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. unfortunately, I love the idea of the level. But, but science is still not going to Scientists, because they have their escape clause for that. You should listen more when you do that. stay level. Yeah. I should. So. But yeah, but I, it, it's good publicity still that, they picked up on it just to say he's wrong. So it does put the word out there. Yeah. I, again, they didn't have to latch onto it. I mean, yeah, you got 90% thumbs down, but, Oh, you know what? I should click on that link real quick. Since I got gotcha. you Remember that link I was telling you about the, uh, maybe I should show that to you real quick. And that is, Oh, what's it called? It's Story hitting mainstream UK news. In fact, I will paste it in so you can see it. One second. We can do this. We have the technology. Okay, there's the link, and I'm going to click on it. You can click on it as well. That is, yeah, Metro, and that's a UK thing. Man uses spirit level to prove that the Earth is flat, and you scroll down. Has this convinced you that the Earth is flat? Yes, no, or duh, I knew this already. I knew this already like it's flat, or duh, I knew it was a globe. You wonder. So I'm going to click on yes, right? I clicked it. And it says... 74% 74% no, duh, I knew this already was 14, and yes was 12%. Okay, and there's probably a lot of people that have clicked on this. And you're thinking, okay, Mark, what does that tell you? It tells me, since it's an anonymous thing, that, and, and people will well, there'll be a lot of flat earthers that'll click on this. It's like, well, there's a lot of people that didn't. Remember, 74% said no, and you're thinking, okay, 
even if it's 10%, let's round down to 10%, right? That means that if it's, there's 300 million people in the U S that's 30 million people just in the yep. U S that believe in flat earth. That's huge. That's a, that's a market share that any corporation would want to go after. So oh, yeah, that's awesome. So the question is, what does duh, I knew this already mean? Is that negative or positive? I would think that'd be like, positive. Like, that'd be duh, positive. I already knew the earth was flat. It didn't convince me because I already knew it. Oh, so well, in which case, if, if that's the case. 14% are the flat earthers. Right. The 14% are the flat earthers, and then 12% were convinced on the fly. So according to this, we've almost doubled our numbers because of this. Ah. Interesting. Interesting. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to send this. I'm going to send this link off to uh, uh, IPS and see what he can do with it. See if he can change the numbers. Well, we, you know, we don't know how many people clicked on this sucker, but I bet you it's quite a few. Could be. So that's awesome. Yes. Right. All right. Well, you got ten minutes left, probably. So I'm going to let you go. Maybe get another. Hey, call man, it's call been out. a thrill. Thank you. It will. Yeah, I'm going to change the title of this now to the call out show. There you go. We'll 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 figure out. We'll do it. We'll we'll uh, we'll figure this thing out. So. All right. Well, no yeah, worries. All right. Talk to you soon. Okay. We're still online, and apologies to everybody that tried to call in with their normal phone lines. Not going to happen tonight, <clears throat> but that's okay. We are going to polish off the last six or seven minutes with emails. Here we go. This one's called Vague Flat Earth Reference from 1982. Hey, Mark, I recently found the Cheers sitcom on Netflix, season one, episode one. Wow. Around the 10-minute mark, Coach says... He was the very best, as sure as the earth is round. Sam then says, you don't believe that, coach. And then coach says, you know, I never used to believe it, uh, Sam, until I saw those pictures from the space shuttle. Of course, everything was said in a joking, chortle-inspiring manner. It's worth a listen and look. If it is of interest, maybe you can grab the audio clip for something. I, I'm Heck, I may even grab the video clip of it if it's cheers, because I was a big fan of that show. So let's see if, you know what, I'll see if I can download that season one, episode one, the first 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah I'm going to see if I can grab it. That's awesome. This one's called domain name flatearth.com. The domain name flatearth.com is registered to Frito Lay. That's interesting. This was sent to Jaren and Bob and some other people as well. Uh, Frito Lay is owned by Pepsi, the wealthiest company in the world. I don't know about that. Uh, but but they're up there. Pepsi is also heavily invested in the Church of Mormon. Look at the date it was registered, 7-26-1995. So Pepsi registered flatearth.com 20 years ago, 22 years ago, actually. It actually expires next year. Uh, let's see, July 26, 2018. Coincidence. I think it, I might be onto something, but just not sure. I'll keep digging through. Now, look at the news the same that same night. I included a clip of the evening, evening news with Dan Rather, skipped to 245 for a clip of NASA. Yeah, I saw that as well. That was interesting. Yeah, so flatearth.com, owned by Pepsi. And it doesn't expire until next year. In fact, about a year from now. One second. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Got a few more emails to read. This one's called, What If You're Both Right, Flat Earth and Round Earth? Mark, I was thinking, what if the section we know of as Earth is truly flat, which I believe it is? What if it is artificially flattened? Looking at things on a bigger spectrum, our section being encased under a dome with an artificial ecosystem made just for us. Above and around our dome is more water or ocean, us being so many miles under that it looks like black space. Now, in order for that to happen, it would mean more land beyond our sector to hold that water together. Now, there could be other life forms living out there, either going through what we're going through, asking the same questions, encased in a similar dome as ours, but made for their environment or ecosystem, or they are far more advanced and allowed to live out there without a dome, 
giving them much more land to live on or share with other alien or human races. That would mean our world we know of is just a tiny fraction of what its true size is. Yeah, I know this one. Take a golf ball. Imagine every dimple on the ball is the size of what we know our world to be. Every section is leveled for an environment to live on, flattened just enough in each section to make it seem flat. Yet at a distance, keeping a circular shape, that would mean the Earth as we know it is far bigger than what we were led to believe. Oxygen levels are higher creating life in a bigger level physically, hence giants or Nephilim or vegetation on a bigger scale. Example, giant tree stumps such as Devil's Tower, chopping down those trees in our ecosystem. And then the email trails off. He was probably killed at that point. Hmm. Well, sorry, I won't be able to finish that one. This one's called Coloring Book. Hi, Mark. Love your show. I had next to no problem believing the earth is flat. In fact, it made my health improve tenfold since seeing so many videos confirming what most of us instinctively know. Our eyes, like all animals, were created for one reason, to make sense of our environment in order to survive. It's a crime that we were disconnected from those instincts. I won't go on. Most all listening get it, and the others will find their way back through all the murk to it. Now, how about some flat earth coloring books? (laughs) Awesome. Regards. No longer sleeping in Velcro sh- sheets down under. Nanette. Oh, she's she's down in Australia. And she spells her name N O N N E T T E. Awesome. And I should have noticed because she had a dot AU email address. So that's cool. Uh, do we have time for one more? Uh, this one's called "The Sky Is an LCD Screen." What fascinates about me about this mark is that if the sun is a hologram, how? Can it give off the amount of heat that it does? The moon, I can understand. It's self-illuminating. What, that's some serious technology on the creator's part. And that's from Saskatoon Clint. And, well, no, I, I don't necessarily think the sun is a hologram. I think it's giving off a whole bunch of light. And, you know, no different than our light bulbs. I mean, put your, put your hand next to a, a common light bulb, incandescent bulb, not that LED crap. Incandescent bulb for just a short while. Your light bulbs can, can set fires. All right, you know what? Let's wrap this one up for now. We got about a minute and a half until the end of the show. So uh, remember that tomorrow I am going to be on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes at 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 Eastern on Patricia Steer's Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes show. Thanks to the peanut gallery for trying to work with me through all the problems. Thanks to the people that answered their phone because it was was, instead of a call in show, it's now turned into a call out show. Thanks to the studio for trying to fix it on their side. And thanks for everyone that sends emails. I love them. And again, you know, snail mails are also great. You guys want to send me any fun stuff, whether it be merchandise or cookies or whatever it is. It's, it's always fun because I try to wear it on on shows and i'll definitely you know take pictures of it and put it in the in the slideshows as well which is kind of fun 10 commandments you know i still don't have memorized which i really should but i one rule i try to follow is you know treat others better than you treat yourself if you do that pay it forward the world will be a better place if you don't be careful because everything's recorded everything we do and say here is uh is recorded so anyway guys until next time, uh, stay flat. Or you know what? Same flat time, same flat channel. Be there next week. What is this? What is this? Is that a model of the flat geocentric Earth? <laughs> nice. I had to make a new one. What are you doing? Thank you.